Hi, I'm Parneet Jaggi and this is going to be the fourth video on the very interesting and intriguing story Some Words with a Mummy written by Edgar Allan Poe. As we started with the story, we saw that this was a mission to unwrap a mummy and uh, this narrator of the story is called by Dr. Pononer at that experimental lab where they are unwrapping the mummy and when they start unwrapping the mummy, they are surprised to see so many layers intact, keeping the mummy safe and preserved. And when they open the mummy, they find that the skin is red and without any cuts or incisions in the body and no organ has been disturbed um, by anybody. So when they decide to give the electrical uh, supply or electrical shock to that mummy, as soon as they connect the wires, there is a movement in the eyes of the mummy. Secondly, when they give that electrical current, um, the mummy lifts its leg and kicks uh, the doctor out of the window to the surprise of everybody. So now we see that as soon as current passes through the body of this mummy, there is complete life in the mummy. And this mummy gets up and we come to know that the mummy's name is Ala Mistakio. But he is addressed respectively as the Count. And after chastising the group for violating his physical remains and receiving an apology, the Count allows the doctor to repair the incisions he made and give him clothes to wear. The Count also explains that he was never dead in the first place. Now what happens is, when he is given the current, of course he gets up, sits on the table. Now they have used electricity on his body. And the amount of electricity causes this mummy to awaken. And the moment he awakens and sits, he condemns these men. He rebukes these men for their abusive use of science. So much so that these men have to apologize to this Allah Mistakio, who is respectfully known as the Count. And they make their apologies to him explain it to him why they had to dissect the mummies and also the scientific importance of doing this. Now he has to, Allah Mistakio has to satisfy himself with this explanation and their apologies. So he kinds of uh, shakes hands with these men and he, he makes sure that the incisions, the cuts done on his body are repaired by these people. And then he also explains that he was never dead actually. He was just wrapped up and placed as a mummy in the coffin. So now as we can look at this picture, it is very clear and the pictorial uh, representation shows here how he's, the mummy is placed on the table and these people are working on the mummy, although it's a fictional picture. Now according to this mummy, who is also the count, by the name of Allah Mistakio. He explains how he had been taken ill and was catatonic when his friends had him embalmed while he was actually still alive. Now he is also given proper clothes by these people to sit up and talk. He is also offered wine by these people. So he gets up, talks to him, talks to these people and he tells them how he was taken ill and he was embalmed. Embalmed means the whole process of that chemical covering was done to him while he was still alive. He had not died actually. Since he was a descendant of Scarabius, an Egyptian figure who may or may not have been a deity, his organs and brain were not removed. Now he claims that he belongs to a very special family, uh, an extraordinary family. He was a descendant of Scarabius, an Egyptian figure who cannot, who can be regarded as a deity, as a god, but for, by some people it may not have been regarded as a deity. 
So for that matter, belonging to a special descendants, a special family, his organs and his brain were not removed. That is why these doctors did not find any cut or surgery or incision on his body. He merely went into a state of homeostasis until he was woken up. So this was a different case in which he did not die and then he was embalmed. So he now explains how he came to be a mummy. Uh, he also explains that how during his time the ancient Egyptians had a very long span than the modern men. They could even live to 1000 years. So the count explains that during his time it was not unusual for those who had the blood of scarabeus to be purposely embalmed with instructions as to when to be revived. The count then gives us an example. An Egyptian historian who has written about Egyptian history might purposely be embalmed and then reawakened thousands of years later so that he can make any corrections to the historical record that has been distorted over the years. Now, this was a strange story for these doctors, which they had never heard. That this was the kind of culture the Egyptians were maintaining long back. He says that even the ancient Egyptians had a significantly longer span, longer lifespan than today's modern man. They, they could even live up to 1000 years and they were also able to be embalmed. Now, this process of embalming actually arrested the bodily functions, allowing them to sleep through hundreds of years, only to rise and go on with their lives centuries later. So, Alam is take you again, chastises these men for their ignorance of Egyptian history. So, according to the count, the historian would go to work immediately in correcting from his own private knowledge and experience the traditions of the day concerning the epoch at which he had originally lived. This would prevent Egyptian history from degeneration, degenerating into absolute fable by subsequent authors who misinterpreted or sought to rewrite or add to the original work. The count and the men then have a discussion comparing the modern world and the ancient. So this is what is going on on the table. Ala Mistakyo, the count, is telling these people about the Egyptian culture and how these mummies were preserved alive so that they would get up, wake up hundreds of years later to tell the history of Egypt to the people of those times. And... He also explains that throughout time, man has always been monotheistic and the pagan gods were symbols of the various aspects of one true God. The, the men then even ask him, as he is over 5,000 years old, if he knows anything about how the universe was created 10,000 years old. So this was the discourse on theology, on science and technology. When discussing theological topics, the count explains that the group is wrong about the Egyptian culture and the Egyptian concepts when it assumes that the Egyptians worship more than one god. He said, not nation, one nation upon the face of earth has ever acknowledged more than one god. He even explains that Scarabius and other Egyptian figures were the means for communicating with the gods. When further questioned regarding the creation of the world, the count states that during my time, I am quoting from the text, during my time I never knew one to entertain so singular a fancy as the universe or this world if you will have it so ever had a beginning at all. So now this was the discussion on the history of Egypt and how the universe might have been created. So he even says, he responds that no one uh, during his time entertained the fantasy that the universe was ever created, but they believed that the universe always existed. Although some believe that humans were created by spontaneous generation in a polygenic manner in different places. 
Uh, then there were a lot of questions between them, questions and discussions between both the groups. And when they discuss science, the narrator tries to impress the Count with the superiority of the modern day, that is the 19th century, belief in phrenology. Now this phrenology is the study of the skull for bumps to determine a person's characteristics and proclivities. Then he also brings up other scientific discoveries that are purportedly new and explain human behavior. Now obviously these doctors are advocating new science, new technology and the 19th century concepts and ideology. But Allah mistake you, the mummy, the count dismisses them as something the Egyptians tried centuries ago, debunked them, discarded them, called them futile and wasted. The doctor then boasts about modern technology and architecture. He asks the count if he has ever seen anything like the bowling green fountain. To this, the count points out the temple of Karnak, Egypt, which consisted of 144 columns, 37 feet in circumference and 25 feet apart. He even goes on to further explain that when you approached Karnak from the Nile, you walked through an avenue two miles long composed of sphinxes, statues and obelisks. To this answer, Dr. Pononer insists that there was still nothing like the bowling green fountain. Now this was another discussion about this fountain to which both the groups do not agree. Now, at certain places, like uh, certain discussions, like Pononer's lozenges or pills, Allah Mistakeo has to accept defeat. And in triumph, these men disperse. They leave the mummy there and they disperse. So towards the end, we see the narrator having gone home and gone back to bed. He awakes the following morning and he decides... He contemplates on what happened the last night and he decides that he is unhappy with his own time, with his own circumstances, with the world he is living in and he thinks, he plans, he resolves to go to Pononers to get embalmed for a couple of hundred years just like the mummy had got it done. So Allah Mr. Q had kind of motivated them uh, towards this process of getting embalmed before even death. So this was an enigmatic, intriguing story, Some Words with a Mummy by Edgar Allan Poe. We'll take up the analysis in the coming video. Thank you for now.